Welcome to another episode of the Lyceum of History, the Eastern Woodlands Native Americans. We have three goals in this video. First, we want to look at the geography of the Eastern Woodlands. Second, we want to look at the culture and history of the tribes. And three, we want to look at the tribes today. The geography of the Eastern Woodlands provided a land full of forest, rivers, and lakes and was rich in natural resources. In addition, the fertile soil made the region easy to grow crops in. And the border of this region is normally considered the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River to the north, the Ohio River to the south, the Atlantic Ocean to the east, and the Mississippi River to the west. And you can see the arrow on the screen pointing towards where the Eastern Woodland Indians lived. The summers are warm to hot and humid. Highs can be anywhere from the mid-70s to low 90s. And the winters are cold with snowfall. Precipitation ranges anywhere from 30 to 50 inches per year, but the drier you get, the further west you go. Perhaps the most famous of the tribes in the area were known as the Iroquois Confederacy. Over a thousand years ago, five nations decided to form an alliance for mutual protection. These nations were the Mohawk, Cayuga, Seneca, Oneida, and Onondaga. And in 1722, the Tuscarora joined them. Sometimes this group is also known as the Six Nations. They became one of the oldest democracies in the world. What made this group particularly interesting was that they allowed the women to choose the leaders and they could actually remove them from office if they didn't do a good job. And they're actually still active today. And as you can see in the map, they took up most of what's now New York State. Other major tribes in the area, besides the Iroquois, were the Algonquin, Huron, Powhatan, Shawnee, Delaware, and Chippewa tribes, although you can see in the map there were many others that lived in the Northeast. The tribes in the area used the natural resources to build homes. Their primary home was called the Longhouse, named for the shape. They were made from wood and bark, and they were usually anywhere from 60 to 80 feet long, although there were examples of some up to 200 feet long. They had a curved dome-like roof and they were divided into sections, each section having its own fire for both cooking and warmth. And actually multiple families lived in one longhouse. And a fence was built to protect the community. And you can see in the illustration an outside view of the house inside, as well as a visual illustration showing you what the house would have looked like structurally. The fertile soil of the region allowed these tribes to grow what's known as the Three Sisters, corn, beans, and squash. Not only do these three provide adequate nutrients, but they also provide mutual benefits in the soil. In addition to eating these, they gathered wild berries and nuts, hunted large game like deer, elk, and bear, as well as small game like rabbits and squirrels. They also fished the rivers and lakes, and if they were close to it, the coastal areas. And they even made maple syrup in the spring from the numerous maple trees in the area, something they still do today. They used their natural resources to make their clothing as well. In fact, most of their clothing was made from soft deer skin. Men wore breechcloths and leggings, and in winter they added deerskin shirts and cloaks. Women wore deerskin dresses or skirts, with leggings often decorated with fringes, beads, or painted designs. Both men and women wore moccasins, which were soft leather shoes that protected their feet and in addition allowed them to move quietly in the forest. Other decorative clothing was worn during ceremonies and dances. Their technology was based on the resources they had available to them. They used stone to make arrowheads, tomahawks, knives, etc. They used bow and arrow to hunt. They made canoes as well as pottery for practical purposes. The tribes were religious in nature. They all had a belief in the Great Spirit, and nature was important to them. They believed everything in nature, living or non-living, possessed a spirit. This is called animism. And to celebrate this, they had many ceremonies and rituals. And specialized men that were able to help people they were known as medicine men or shamans. They were called upon during times of war or illness. You can see in the illustration, the wooden mass was used in ceremonies, as well as the painting of the native ceremony, calling upon the Great Spirit. Some tribes even built burial mounds to bury their dead, such as this Hopewell Mound in Ohio. Their pre-Columbian economy, or the economy before the arrival of Europeans, was a substance-based economy where they grew and made everything they needed. 
They engaged in both agriculture and hunting and gathering to gather the supplies they needed, and had a limited trade network. With the arrival of the Europeans came metal tools, weapons, and cloth. It also greatly increased the fur trade as demand for pelts, especially beaver pelts, was huge in Europe. And you can see on the map the many different forts that came up over the years as the beaver trade reached a frenzy. And over time there was a dependency on European goods and eventually this led to land loss as natives were forced to move to reservations to make room for European settlers. One example can be highlighted by this primary source between the Delaware Nation and the United States. It was the first peace treaty the United States signed with the Native American tribe, and it set a precedent. The United States would deal with Native tribes as sovereign nations. They rarely upheld these treaties, but nonetheless they signed them. And this treaty was with the Delaware tribe, and as you can see in the picture to the right, taken many years after the treaty, Black Beaver, a Delaware born in Illinois. Today, there are still numerous Native American reservations throughout the continent of the United States, and you can see on the map, the majority of the larger ones are out in the west. Although there still are a few left in what's now northeast New England area. To summarize, the eastern woodlands was home to multiple Native American tribes. The area is home to dense forests, lakes, rivers, and some coastal areas, providing many natural resources. Each tribe had their own unique culture. Their diet was based on the three sisters, and their ancestors still live there today. Thank you so much for watching this video from the Lyceum of History. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos from the Lyceum of History.